Hey guys, you know the drill. This is a dot OS review, but before we start the dot OS review, uh, we have decided that we are going to be donating the revenue from the videos from the week of May the 7th. Uh, so the 7th to the 14th, uh, all of the revenue for the month of May is going to be donated to uh, a Give India or a Care for India relief fund that is focusing on providing oxygen cylinders for people that need them and creating oxygen cylinder refill stations inside of hospitals because right now there's a shortage of that. All you guys got to do to help out with that is go ahead and share these videos. I'm not asking anyone to donate any money. But if you share the videos, if you watch the videos, they generate more revenue and that revenue is going to get donated. So I've been posting screenshots on my Twitter, which you guys can check out. I've been posting screenshots on my Discord server, which you guys can also check out, as well as the community feed. So I've got some notes here on some of the features and stuff that I love about this ROM. And before we kind of get going on this, this ROM reminds me a lot of Oxygen OS when I had Oxygen OS on my OnePlus 3T back four and a half years or so ago. Very much a stock Android with some customization tweaks and features. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about is battery life because that has been absolutely astonishing. Battery life on this ROM at 120 Hertz has been absolutely incredible. We're talking eight and a half hours of screen on time with this uh, at the device got down to 6% battery. So looking at eight and a half, nine hours screen on time at 120 Hertz, meaning at 60 Hertz, probably 10 hours of screen on time. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I did a fast charging test with the 33 watt charger um, to see if it worked. And you guys can go ahead and check that footage out right now. One of the more common asked questions that I get from you guys is whether or not the ultra fast charging 33 watt charger works with these aftermarket ROMs. This is currently using the stock included cable. I'm using the stock 33 watt charger and my device has been charging for like five or six minutes and it says charging slowly one hour 47 minutes until fully charged. Uh, so whether or not we've, we're getting the 33 watt charging the ROM does not tell us that. Um, if the stock kernel is in place, then usually we'll get all of the charging features or all of the stuff that we would normally get. Here, I will show you. See, is this now it says 55 minutes left until fully charged. I had eight hours, 33 minutes screen on time with it, which was pretty cool. And another quick thing I wanna show you guys about battery and charging and kind of thermal management in general on .OS is that we have thermal profiling. So basically we can set up specific apps to allow the device to run hotter. So like for instance, um, for the camera app, uh, I notice that the device gets warm when I'm using Gcam and portrait mode. So we could go ahead and enable benchmark, which would let the device get hotter. Obviously you have the possibility of ruining certain aspects of your device, but it's cool that we have these tweaks in general. So we're gonna let this device charge now, screen off. Uh, I'll come back in 15 minutes, see what the charging speed is on Aero OS. Oh, oops, dot OS. <coughs> 15 minutes later. Okay, just want to give you guys a 15 minute update on the charging status with Dot OS. Uh, the phone has been charging for about 15 minutes. We started at 5%, we are at 45%. So basically uh, roughly 40% charging in 15 minutes. But most important thing, ambient room temperature is around 27, 28 degrees. Charging, no case, phone, face down. That's how you get the fastest charging speed. It's with a cool phone. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, quick update on the fast charging with this ROM. It has been 30 minutes since I plugged the device in. And after 30 minutes of time, we went from 5% to 62%. So after the first like 50% of charge for the device, you guys can see that the charging on this absolutely begins to just fall off a cliff. Really, the Xiaomi 33 watt fast charging 
for anything more than 50% charge or when your device is more than 50% charge is very much in my opinion kind of a scam and what I mean by that is that you are really only getting that 33 watts of fast charging for a slow period of time like for a short period of time so the real kind of takeaway from this is that if you guys uh, want to get the fastest charging from your phone it needs to be cool uh, and really if your phone is above 63 or 60% charge using an 18 watt quick charge 3 charger is going to get you the same if not almost identical performance because it's going to heat the phone up slower. And back up top it does seem that the 33 watt charger works and works totally normally uh, on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and on this ROM. Some other features that I am absolutely in love with uh, with Dot OS are some of the tweaks that we have. So if you guys are not familiar, Dot OS is a, an operating system based on the Android open source platform, but you have all of these tweaks, features, things that you can do to just customize your user experience. If you look at the quick settings tab, I've got data usage. I got uh, all of the quick settings icons are in the shape of the icons of the home screen. I can change accent color, grid layout, um, just uh, quick settings, notification bar, active on display. I mean, it just works really, really well. And that's really why it reminds me of Oxygen OS, because it's like stock Android, but better. I mean, it, it really is awesome. All of the Google features that you, you guys would expect from an Android open source ROM uh, work and work fine. So the swipe up works fine. Um, one bug that I have noticed on the Google feed, and this could be because I have Google Chrome disabled, but when I tap on the stories, they don't come up. So this could be a thing that because I'm using Brave Browser, and if you guys are using Brave Browser and you want to donate some of your crypto to me, that's awesome. And that goes a long way to supporting my channel along with using my affiliate links. But that's really the only bug that I've found that doesn't work. The auto brightness works fine. Proximity sensor seems to work fine. You are gonna have to load up a version of Google Camera. Uh, and in this case, I'm using the BSG camera mod if you guys wanna get the best camera performance out of it. Uh, the stock email application is Gmail. Screen flickering, I haven't noticed any screen flickering at 60 hertz. But really, this is uh, just a super, super smooth, super well-refined, super optimized Android open source ROM for the Redmi Note 10 Pro, and it feels like Oxygen OS in a lot of ways with the functionality and with the tweaks, and it's something that me personally have been like, just, it, it's been awesome. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. All of like the notification quirks and stuff like that that you guys might have complained about, uh, that stuff that I never experienced on MIUI stock, and if you guys are, uh, I will have a video linked about that up here. But ultimately, um, this is one of these ROMs that on first impression of it, I haven't found a lot in the way of bugs. The customization is great. Uh, the system stability is great. Now, at uh, RAM management, you guys know I am not the biggest fan of the way Android open source does RAM management. I've noticed that it definitely did, does still close some of my background apps and the inability to pin apps open is something that I find just gives worse performance than MIUI. Um, it's something that's that's kind of a, a bummer. And if you guys have any Android open source ROMs that support that, please let me know in the comment section down below. Because having to wait for apps to open um, is something that is kind of a bummer. App opening speed is not something that I'm really seeing much of a difference of between MIUI and between all of these other apps. I've noticed that it just, it seems to be quite normal. Like it, it's just, it's quick, 
but it's not extra quick. It's not astonishingly quick. What I wanna know is what other stuff are you guys curious about with this ROM? Because this ROM has been really, really good. Like it, it feels like I'm just kind of repeating myself at this point, but with all of the things that I've used this ROM for, um, at 120 hertz, it does feel fast and smooth, and it does feel really responsive. One thing I should mention uh, that I have done, here you guys can see the time to load up Spotify, and it, it works. It works, like it, it works pretty, pretty okay. Um, but one of the features uh, that I have done in this to make it feel even faster was to shorten my animation time uh, because ultimately some of the shorter animation times just kind of make it feel snappier. But that said, because we're stuck on UFS 2.2 storage, uh, the opening from RAM, here we'll open up Reddit. It, it's not, it's, it's not super, it's not super snappy. So it's one of these things that it's a it's a pain point of Android open source. It's something that I would love to work with a developer to do like my own custom Android open source ROM that incorporates some of this stuff so that we can get better performance out of these mid-range devices that don't have UFS 3.1 storage. But what do you guys wanna know? I'm probably gonna test this ROM for another day or so just because this ROM just seems awesome and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of bugs with it. So, okay, share the videos if you wanna support India. If you wanna support me, use my affiliate links or use my uh, promotional link for Surfshark VPN. That goes a really, really long way to helping me. Donate your brave BAT basic attention coins to me uh, at no cost to you guys. And until next time, it's been Mitchell, peace.